We are joined on the line by our good friend Larry Kudlow from CNBC. Larry, good morning to you. Hello, Larry. Here I am. All right, good. Good morning. I, I love it when the technology works. <laughs> okay, look, uh, I want to start. You're, you're there in New York, and uh, you've got this governor uh, named Cuomo, and he had some things to say the other day that were pretty interesting. We want to go to cut 14 here, Mike. I uh, said that there are certain people in his state who simply are just not welcome. Here is Governor Cuomo. Who are they? Are they these extreme conservatives who are right to life? A pro assault weapon, anti gay, is that who they are? Because if that's who they are, and if they are the extreme conservatives, they have no place in the state of New York. So if so I have this, because that's not who New Yorkers are. So if I have this right, if you're in New York and you are, oh, you know, a devout Catholic, if you believe in the Second Amendment and uh, you look at a traditional, you know, view of marriage, then you're not welcome in the state of New York. Yeah, apparently not. It's a very odd thing for him to say. Um, you know, it kind of boils down to Cardinal Dolan, yeah, who's a very popular figure, I might add, and of course his right to life and in favor of traditional marriage. And regarding the Second Amendment, um, the Second Amendment is legal, so far as I know. I just, I never, I don't know where Cuomo's going on this. Um, sounds like he's getting pretty cocky regarding re-election. And sounds like he thinks it's just going to be a layup. Maybe he's right about that. Maybe he's not right about that. And um, New York economy, you know, which is going to be awfully important, apart from these social issues, New York economy is not very good. And everybody knows that this is an inhospitable place to do business, one of the worst in the country. So he might want to think about that. And... Um, I guess he might want to think about his so-called moderate image, or does he want to go to the left of Hillary? I mean, I just don't know what well, this is all about. And let's talk about the economic aspect of that, uh, Larry Kudlow, because I heard this, and I thought to myself, you know, I go up to New York about once a month, and, and it's not cheap to stay in a hotel there, and I usually see some theater, and God knows the restaurants aren't cheap. And, you know, conservatives generally don't do economic boycotts. What they do is like in the Chick-fil-A thing, they all come out and they spend their money to support Chick-fil-A. I mean, can, can, can you imagine conservatives sort of really getting fed up with this kind of thing and saying, okay, you don't want us there? Fine. We'll keep our money. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a kind of political media warfare. I just don't know where he's going on this, but it certainly has become a story. And it certainly, it, I think it's going to probably hurt him among independents who may be Catholic and may be church-going Catholics. I mean, I think that I think the right to life thing is probably the toughest one because mm -hmm. New York has always had a pretty strong right to life. There was a right to life party line, by the way, that helped elect Republican governors like George uh, Pataki and others down through the years. I, I don't know why Cuomo would say that. But isn't it interesting that while the national media is paying so much attention to Governor Christie in New Jersey, uh, this is not getting the traction. I mean, you've got a mayor or a governor of a state saying you're not welcome here if you've got, frankly, some pretty ma I mean, you know, if, if, if anybody in Texas, if the governor of Texas had said this about people who were pro-choice and who were uh, pro-gun control, can you imagine the outcry? I think um, maybe I'd be wrong about this, but it's funny. I spent about an hour and a half with Cardinal Dolan and a small group of us last week. We were talking about the Pope's rather extreme statements against capitalism. We didn't get around to this because it hadn't happened yet. I saw the Cardinal on, I guess it was a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that um, we may hear from Cardinal Dolan on this, though, particularly, particularly on the right to life issue. Maybe he's just made the calculation that these, these are people who traditionally would not vote for him anyway, and he doesn't need their vote. You know, there's a bit of a history here. Um, Andrew Cuomo's father, Mario Cuomo, uh, who also was a pro-abortion uh, governor, a uh, Catholic governor, had a lot of trouble with the church down through the years and um, finally lost after winning three terms. Yeah. But the point I'm making is it seems to run in the Cuomo family. Now, why Andrew f figured he had to go public with this and you know, literally exclude people or try to exclude people from being in New York, I'll, I'll never know. I don't understand the logic. I don't think it's going to help him. I don't think it's going to help his image. Um, but now the question is, can the Republican Party in the state of New York, I used to be active in it at one point, I was vice chairman of the party, um, can they mount a strong 
opposition to Cuomo. That may be what this is all about, that Cuomo has just gotten so cocky. And I don't know the answer to that. It's, it's not a strong Republican Party. It does have an outstanding potential candidate in Rob Astorino, who's the county executive in Westchester. And I think co- uh, the support is coalescing around Astorino. It's a little bit early yet. But we will see. We will see. I don't think statements like these are arrogant statements by Governor Cuomo, who, frankly, up to now has tried to cultivate a rather um, moderate image on a lot of things, especially economics. So... What his motive is, I don't know. It's not going to help him. Let's shift to the economy real fast, Larry Kudlow. We saw a lot of conversation yesterday on Martin Luther King Day about income inequality and that uh, we have to solve income inequality to really satisfy Martin Luther King's dream. Uh, there, a lot of people were talking about the Fed actually having a lot to do with income inequality because people have gotten richer with Wall Street doing well, with interest rates low, and uh, and that's been a big part of this. I mean, did, did, where do you, do, where do you uh, come in on that? Well, I... <laughs> Look, the Fed has done what it's done. This is just the last couple of years. I mean, Obama and other other people are talking about going back to the late 1970s. That's Obama's argument. Yeah. And if you go back to the late 1970s and you count properly, I mean, there's always a debate about the numbers, but if you count all government assistance, both cash and in kind, including things like food stamps and uh, medical programs and uh, refundable tax credits, what you find, by the way, is that the lower 20% and the middle 20% have done, you know, gone up about 40% some odd in uh, these recent decades. So the idea that they're falling is simply not true. Now, has the top top done well? Yes, they have done well. But I don't think that's bad. I mean, a capitalist system uh, is equality of opportunity, not equality of results. Equality of results was supposedly a socialist or a communist tenant. Uh, which was proven wrong because the bureaucrats in the nomenclatura, they had all the money. So the point I'm making is the president will probably stress this in his uh, State of the Union speech. He'd rather talk about this than he would uh, Obamacare or the poor fortunes of the labor market. Well, no, he, 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 he's going nowhere. He's decided he's not going to talk about any of those things because he's decided that they're, they're, the reason that he is failing as a president is because some people don't like him because he's black. That just came out. Oh, I just hate that. I, mean, he, yeah. is that, I haven't read this article, but I did see a clip that he said some people like him because he's black other people don't like him because he's black um, I don't know what again wh- where he's going with this kind of thing I-, I don't think any of that's going to determine the election I don't think any of that's going to be an issue the issues come fall are going to be the failure of Obamacare and the still lagging economy that right. those are going to be the, the two issues and um, the question is what's the Democrats going to say you know this guy de blasio in new york i call him the sandinista mayor <laughs> and he's you know because of the time spent in nicaragua and cuba and he and the people like senator elizabeth warren up in massachusetts have been talking a lot about income equality taxing rich people at one point de blasio said well taxing rich people is fair quote unquote fair meanwhile again i come back to this point new york has one of the most inhospitable business yep. climates in the country yes. according to survey after survey but, but conservatives aren't welcome there right. larry kudlow so Thank good to so have much. you as always larry kudlow the cuddler report on cnbc